Hi, welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. It is a blue moon special because it is, because it is the fifth Wednesday of the month. And uh, it's a, an extra awesome blue moon special. I think it's our very first time of being an actual blue moon. And go figure, it's a blue blood moon, super moon, wah, wah, wah thing um, that people are watching all over the world, which is kind of cool. Um, and I saw on Facebook, so I didn't verify, um, that it's been 152 years since all three of these things have come together. You know, that may be true, may not be true. If you out there are a planetarium person and you know for sure, do let me know. But, but you know, you also see those things where people will say, there are five Tuesdays this month and it's the first time in 57 years, which is not true. It happens a bunch of times every year. But anyway, <laughs> um, this one, it's at least snazzy enough that I know that we have not ever done a Blue Moon Wednesday webinar on an actual blue moon. And so that's cool. And it's cooler still because we're talking about booths and booth sales, which I adore. I am a huge fan of our uh, Girl Scout cookie sale program just in general. And I love the booth sales because um, it, it's such a direct opportunity for girls and the public to get together and for people to discover the awesome things that are happening in our Girl Scout troops and around the state really beyond that. So, so let's jump into that booth sales. What in the world? Um, but really it's a place for girls to build their people skills, that one-on-one -on -one conversation to work on their money management because um, they're actually handling money, right? And how often do any of us actually handle money anymore unless we work in a direct sales situation? Um, that for them to think about their business ethics. Is this an ethical thing for us to do? Should we put a tip jar out? No. Um, should we put signs up? Yes. Should we jump around and get in people's faces? No. You know, all those things <laughs> having to do with business. If somebody makes a donation, should we not give them, should we not donate a box of cookies in their name to um, the organization we said we should? Of course you should donate. it. So, you know, it's really that immediate opportunity for girls to face to face with the business ethics. And it's that great time for collaboration because remember the booth sales, you have to have at least three girls and you have to have at least two adults, two registered background checked adults. Um, I believe that's true. So <laughs> Nicole, if you're here, verify if I just led people astray, but my understanding is dealing with money. So, um, and for learn by doing that hands on, you are right there working with the cookies, working with the money, working with humans. And um, what better way for girls to learn those people skills, the money management and the business ethics. And it's that time best of all, where girls get to represent Girl Scouts. And remember the, the Girl Scout cookie program, sure, it's money earning for all of us. Um, and it's a chance for girls to get to know a product and to build those five skills. It's also perhaps our biggest PR campaign of the year, because you know this, you work with Girl Scouts. And so if you mention to anybody, oh yeah, I'm working with Girl Scouts now. One of the first things out of their mouths is, when are the cookies available? When can I get some cookies? Come to me with your, your daughter's form so I can buy Thin Mints from her or whatever. Cookies comes into the conversation really fast. It's our foot in the door with people, whether we want it to be or not. Um, I used to resent it back when I was first a leader with teen girls. And I was like, oh, there's so much more to Girl Scouts than cookies. And then I realized, you know, if people like you for something that's good, then Let's take advantage of that for an opening to a conversation so that we can share with them all of the, the amazing things that Girl Scouts is, including cookies and beyond cookies. Because really, as I've gotten to know the cookie sale more, I also can only appreciate the um, financial literacy opportunities that are available to our girls and to ourselves through this program. It's it sets us up to do that goal setting, to do the budgeting and really think about what do we want to do? How much is it going to cost? Okay, so how many boxes of cookies does that mean we need to sell as a troop to get to those goals? And it makes it really tangible for the girls. It's it's the laboratory. Think 
chemistry or physics or biology. If you'd only had lectures for those classes, would you have learned anything? Probably not. But when you get to get in there and um, mix chemicals together and have the occasional small explosion <laughs> or, um, or not explosion if you're supposed to or whatever it is, isn't it so much more connectable um, and you're able to get more parts of your brain involved in it and to really feel like you own it and so the the cookie sale program does exactly that and we're able to through the cookie sale program really represent what girl scouts is all about so cookies crafts camp and so much more and so what an opportunity what an opportunity for the girls um, i would hate to deprive them of it and and honestly i think I remember, probably in the early years, um, I wasn't one of the ones who took the girls and who set up booth sales with my own troop. Um, but after we kind of got the hang of things, we sure did. We jumped into it. And the more we did, the more they loved it. And so the more I loved it because they loved it. It's kind of like, you know, how people feel about, well, I don't know if Barney's still on, but I thought, oh, I will never let my kid watch Barney. And then my oldest fell in love with Barney. And suddenly I fell in love with Barney because she was in love with it. Same kind of thing with the, the booth sales. The girls fell in love with it because they saw the opportunity there. And I fell in love with it because they were in love with it. Um, so thinking about all of those opportunities. But because you are reasonable people as Girl Scout adult volunteers, you in the back of your mind, I bet you're thinking, what if? And there are lots of what ifs, aren't there? Especially now that we've evolved to a different way of preparing for cookie booths. Um, and to share that with you, I do have, let's pull this up. I've got the troop guide. Um, this is something you have. This is what the cover of it looks like. The GSME cookie sale troop guide. It's got a lot of information in it for you, including who your cookie supervisor is for your local service unit. Um, and it recounts all the great things that booth sales do for girls. Um, but some things that are a little bit different this year from how they've been in the past is, one, you're ordering your troops cookies online through um, Smart Cookie. And you're gonna be putting in planned orders. And the planned orders can't go into the system until later on in February. And then once they can, you can do two per week. So um, based on people coming to you and asking for additional cookies or based on the booth sales that you have scheduled, you'll wanna strategize how many cookies that you want to order um, in those planned orders so that you're prepared. And there are lots of things that are gonna um, inform how you do your planned order. You'll want to take time and don't feel like you have to do it by yourself. You'll want to take time with your leadership team and with your girls to really think about um, the kinds of cookies that you want and how many that you want. And you're going to use a lot of additional information that, uh, again, we're going to look at in a, a future slide. But you want to remember things like you will not be able to return any cookies. So whatever you take, whatever you sign up from your cookie cupboard, those are going to be yours. And um, they'll be your troops' responsibility to sell out. So you want to pay attention to that. And then this, this troop guide, it has some great ideas for your girls um, to be thinking about on how to make booth sales successful and um, how to do all of this. In fact, you see in here, it tells you about the planned order and how you need to order it sometime prior to 9 p.m. the Sunday before your booth sale. So you could do it as early as 9.01 p.m. two Sundays before your booth sale, but you need to have it in not later than 9 p.m. before your booth sale so that your cookie cupboard supervisor can make sure that she has inventory or he has inventory um, or that they can get some additional cookies prior to. So, um, so there will be some planning, but let's think about this. Let's think about the what if. So it's an additional click. There are lots of clicks. Usually I make things automatic, but I was trying to be dramatic here. So what if the girls don't sign up for the booth? You know, what if you've uh, put in for the lottery and you got one of the Walmart slots on that first Saturday and suddenly all of your girls have something else going on that Saturday and um, they don't sign up to go? 
Well, remember, you do have to have three girls and two adults to do a booth sale. So if you find out that there's a conflict, especially with one of those lottery sales, you need to let your service unit supervisor know straight away. Or uh, Dawn Grimes, who I believe is the person who sent you the email that, that you'd gotten it, so that it can be, the booth sale can be reallocated. We don't want to lose any of those um, big ticket lottery sales because those are a great opportunity for girls to earn a lot of money by selling their cookies. It's a great opportunity for Girl Scouts to show up in the public. I and mean, one of the reasons that those are, are big booth sales is because they're in places where lots of people go. So that. But if it's a, a booth sale that you've set up at a more local place, um, remind your girls, we need at least three girls. We need at least two adults. Um, and if nobody's going to do it, I'm going to have to give it up. What does that mean for our troop? Now, the good news is if you put your your um, planned order in Sunday night and you discover Wednesday that nobody's going to be able to come to your booth sale, you can contact your cookie covered supervisor and let her know, hey, we're not going to we're not going to be able to do the booth this weekend. And so I put in a planned order. Will you please delete it? And she can do that. You don't want to do that a lot because you could really mess up the amount of inventory in the cupboard. But if it happens, rather than your troop get stuck with a whole bunch of cookies for a booth sale that you aren't able to have, please do let your cookie supervisor know as early as possible. What if parents don't help? Yeah. That's a thing. Sometimes parents don't help and sometimes too many parents help. Right? So, um, Work with your whole troop, not just the girls, but also the grownups to say, this is what we need. And if we don't have at least two adults and at least three girls, we can't have a booth sale. Um, and let them know what the, the positive consequences are of having a booth sale. You know, it's not only will we earn this money from you know last year, the booth sale at this place sold 300 boxes of cookies over a three hour session. And so Oh, I should have done 400, sold 400 boxes of cookies during a three hour session. So that was $300 that the troop made. If we don't have this sale, that's $300 we're not going to earn this year. So we need your help for three hours. Is it worth your, is it worth your time? Will you please help your daughter's troop? And ask people directly. Don't just put out a blanket on Facebook or on um, an email, but give them a call directly or send them a text direct, uh, give them a call. People feel guiltier if you um, if you're talking to them directly, right? Um, give them a call and say, "Hey, I really need somebody to help. Will you please come help? Maybe each parent can help for one hour. You know, maybe you do shifts. Um, shifts can be very helpful. What if there's a blizzard? You've put in your planned order. All the girls are on board. All the parents are on board. And then you find out Thursday there's going to be a blizzard on Saturday, and it's going to be um, you know." 50 mile an hour winds and four feet of snow. And it's one of those places where you have to be outside. Well, for heaven's sake, this is Girl Scouts. Don't hurt yourself or endanger anybody um, by being outdoors in a blizzard. Um, again, call your cookie covered supervisor to say, what do we do in this situation? What are we going to do with this? And, you know, you're not going to go out in a blizzard to have a booth sale. That's okay. If it's an Indoor sale, maybe you'd consider, but if you're going to have to drive in the weather, you don't want to drive in the weather either. So be sensible and know that everybody involved is sensible, that communication is going to be the key with this. And it's absolutely 100% okay to call your cookie covered supervisor and say, help me figure this out. Um, help me make good choices here. They're, they're pretty good people. What if no one buys cookies from you? What if you've got this awesome booth sale set up and you were told last year that 200 boxes of cookies were sold at this place on this particular weekend, the first weekend, the third weekend, whatever, um, and nobody's nobody comes? Oh, no. Well, somebody's going to come. People will come. And if you have cookies left over, we have some strategies coming up a little bit later on in this webinar that we'll talk about. Um, but people will come because... People love Girl Scout cookies. And this is also why you want to talk to that cookie covered supervisor prior to putting in your planned order to make sure that you're ordering a reasonable amount of cookie product for the booth sale at that particular place on that particular weekend because it makes a difference. And what if we get stuck with cookies? 
You're not going to get stuck with cookies because we're going to talk a whole bunch of strategies on how to make sure that you're able to order the right amount of cookies and sell the right, sell the cookies that you um, accept that you take from the cookie cupboard so that uh, you end the cookie sale season feeling awesome about your Girl Scout troop and about cookies in general. Because ACK, yes, it would be terrifying if you got, found yourself stuck with thousands and thousands of boxes of cookies. I was distraught one year when I was stuck with a case of, um, oh, what are they, the, the shortbreads, because oh, it, I was, excuse me, I was stuck with 11 boxes of shortbreads because we had sold one box from the uh, the case and there were 11 boxes left and then the girls decided they had found this awesome swap project where they were painting the cookies with Mod Podge and putting pins on the back and they made them as swaps for a big event that we went to and while it's not always the best thing to um, paint food uh, it served those girls and they ended up having a lot of fun We've got um, over in the chat, just to check on what's what's happening over in the chat, Jen Watson just mentioned that shifts are definitely necessary with daisies and brownies. And isn't that the truth? They're little guys. And so two hours, three hours, four hours is a long time for them. Um, she says that they lucked out having their first booth at Maple Sugar at a Maple Sugar Farm on Maple Sugar Sunday, where the girls could take a break and go spend 30 minute breaks at a large place at. That's awesome. Yeah, being able to um, let the girls try different things. Disneyland does it, you know, at, well, maybe you don't know, at Disneyland, people have their shift for 15 or 20 minutes and then everybody rotates so that people stay fresh in the in their job. And if there's somebody you want to be fresh, I'm going to say it would be a Girl Scout at a Girl Scout cookie booth. So we're here today to help make sure that you've got some great ideas and some confidence going into this this direct sales season, this booth season. So first of all, cookies and the cookie program are awesome. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's true, but I looked up just like a good, um, you know, high school junior writing a report. I looked up awesome in the dictionary and, you know, got this nifty definition, but, and saw impressive, inspiring, great admiration, extremely good, excellent. I thought, yes, that is the cookie sale. But then you also get inspires apprehension or fear, the awesome power of an atomic bomb, zoinks, and imposing. And I know some people do feel that way about the cookies. Uh, the cookie sale program, especially when it comes to booths, but don't because the cookies and the cookie sale program are awesome and um, they are beloved. And if we can remember how our customers, how our public looks at us and this terrific product that we have, then it helps us remember to lift them up, to represent them that way so that people are inspired to support the Girl Scouts and to support your troop specifically as they buy them. Um, you've got the power to make it happen and you can do it. Just have to remember what's your blood type B positive. Um, and then I thought, oh no, some people might be oh negative, but no, no, no. For today, for the cookie sale program, be positive. <laughs> um, because you know, success comes in cans, not in cans. I got a million of them. So here are a bunch of ideas from some seasoned volunteers because yes, I have been interviewing people all over the place. And the number one thing is talk to your service unit product sales supervisor. Find out the history of the location, um, the busyness of the weekends. And that means, you know, how many um, cookie boxes tend to sell the first weekend if that's when your sale is. But if, you're, if your sale is the second weekend, there are going to be fewer boxes sold. And the third weekend, it'll pick up again because it's after the 15th and a lot of people get paid mid-month. And then the fourth weekend is the last weekend. And so a lot sells then because, did I just... Um, I might have just told an untruth too. I don't know what March looks like. Uh, March might have five Saturdays, but the last weekend, it, it often picks back up a little bit because it's the end. Oh, that's right. Um, the fifth Saturday in March is the 31st, which is also the day before Easter. So 
you know, you want to take all of, of that into account as well. But but ask your product sales supervisor, your service unit product sales supervisor, because lots of the supervisors had these spreadsheets where they keep track from year to year on how many cookies sold last year that weekend and two years ago that weekend and three years ago that weekend. And the reason that they have kept that kind of data is because traditionally they were the ones who figured out how many boxes of cookies to give you. So ask them about it. They will remember, even though now you're the one making those orders. Um, talk to them about the weather impact. You know, um, for example, in some places, Lowe's lets you come indoors to do the, the product sale. And so even if it's rainy or super cold, you'll still sell a bunch of cookies and you'll, you'll still be comfortable because you're indoors, where some other places you have to stay outdoors. And so it might be... Um, semi-miserable if you're standing in the rain. Um, use a pop-up. I mean, really do try to be creative on things like that because people are still shopping on those uh, on those days. And so weigh the different parts of it and really have that conversation with your product sales supervisor and with your troop. Stay in touch during the week prior. If the weather is iffy, Stay in touch with your product sales supervisor. And you know how the weather goes. We'll hear on Tuesday, oh, it's the storm of the century coming on Saturday. And then you get to Friday and they're like, oh, but it's going to be 40, 40 degrees and sunny. So, you know, if you don't like the weather in Maine, wait a few minutes. It's going to change. And that's true for the predictions, too. But stay in touch with your product sales supervisor ahead of time. And remember that she or he is a volunteer too. And really, it's about respect. Um, even if it were a paid position, I would hope that you would be respectful and kind to that person. And the reality is all of our product sales supervisors, all of our cookie cupboard supervisors are volunteers. And so um, they are working around their regular jobs, they're working around their families, and they're working around all the rest of their commitments, just like you are. Please remember that as you go to them um, for information and cookies. Also, you want to plan ahead with your girls. Think about those girls' personalities. You've got some girls who are shy. You've got some girls who are just super vivacious. You've got some girls who are kind of scattered and, and um, have a hard time focusing. And then you've got a whole bunch of other girls with other personality characteristics. Really think about it and talk with them, frankly. You know, hey, do you think you're going to be comfortable making eye contact with grownups who you don't know and asking them to buy cookies? What are some things we can do to help you build that skill? And you think about that as you buddy people up. If you use shifts, think about that as you pair people for shifts. Don't just do it based on time, but really try to work some personalities together so the grownups aren't having to pinch hit during some shifts, but the, you know, the, the grownups are instead able to just say, hey, Molly, um, did you see how Megan asked that question? The next customer who comes, do you think you can ask that question that way too? And help them build their skills. This is an opportunity for them to build those people skills, right? Um, have the girls make signs and they can make some fairly generic signs that they could use at multiple booth sales. So that's say, you know, get your Girl Scout cookies here, um, but make them big. If it's a three inch letter, that's not big enough. We want six to eight inch letters so people can see them from their cars if they're driving through a parking lot or they can see them from the road if the girls are up in front of the store, but the, the cars are out on the road. We don't need girls standing out on the, the curb. We want them standing, you know, near the booth so they're safe, but we want people to be able to see and practice. Have a practice booth sale at one of your meetings and you know, ask a couple of the parents to come in and be customers so that the girls can practice their rap. You know, hi, my name's, um, hi there, would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? What's your favorite flavor? And you know, they can practice some of their sales techniques. Make agreements about how you want it to go. Really openly discussing with the girls and the parents how the booth sale is going to go. How do you guys want it to go? Um, we've set a goal of earning this much money at this booth sale. And so we've ordered this many cookies and we want to sell out. What are some things we need to do to work together to make that happen? Um, so, you know, it, some of those agreements, depending on your troop, depending on your girls might be nobody walks out in front of cars because you feel like that doesn't need to be said, but it might need to be said out loud. A couple times so that you, you're sure the girls aren't going out into the traffic part at the booth sale. 
Um, we don't want to get in people's faces. Uh, we're, we have to be outside and we're not allowed to go in front of the doors. So how are we going to draw people's attention in a positive way to come over past the door to our booth? Um, think about, uh, take time beforehand, maybe with your co-leaders to talk about how do we see the booth going? And if you have experience with booths, then you're already going to have some images. But if you haven't done a booth before, just take some time to kind of picture how you think it's going to go and then talk about it with the girls and really invite the girls to share some of their ideas too, so that you can go in somewhat prepared uh, mentally as well as physically and then put your booths in cookie finder that's in smart cookies you can enter in your booth sales so that it shows up and i got to show you this right now while i'm thinking of it because it is awesome let's click over here it shows up right here and i didn't think that they would pop up yet because it used to be that they didn't pop up until march but if i put in my zip code right there um, it tells me how many booths are already planned for the radius. Now, I'm not going to go 50 miles to buy cookies, so I'm going to say within a 10-mile radius. And still, it shows me how many booths. And it's really one mile. It's not zero miles. But um, it shows me how many booths are planned very close to where I live. And look at all of those lottery booth sales I recognize, but some that aren't lottery yet. Within 10 miles of my house, there are a lot of cookies to be had for the month of March. And that's only the ones that have been entered so far. So as soon as you have your booth sale set up, go in to your Smart Cookies app and enter it so it shows up on Cookie Finder. Because that's how customers are going to find you, whether they're Girl Scout related customers or just people who are like, hey, I think it's cookie, cookie time. Let's go find those cookie booths and plan to sell out going back to that super positive mindset we are going to sell these cookies so um, you've ordered based on previous sales when you put in your planned order don't just order willy-nilly oh i'm going to get two cases of everything don't do it <laughs> um yeah don't don't do that you will want a lot of thin mints you will want a lot of um Caramel Delights. You will want a lot of peanut butter patties and you're going to want a lot of s'mores. Those s'mores sold like crazy last year. Um, you'll want some of the um, thanks a lot and the lemonades and the peanut butter sandwiches and the um, some, uh, some, uh, they're called trefoils, um, shortbreads. Um, but you're not going to want tons of them. Um, you'll want more of the lemonades and the thanks a lot and even the peanut butter sandwiches than, than you will of the shortbreads, but you'll want some shortbreads because there are people who want them. You don't have to order by the case for your planned order. You can order individual boxes. So if you're going to a place that your product sales supervisor told you last year, they sold 100 boxes of cookies at this booth, um, you certainly don't want a whole case of shortbreads. You don't want a whole case of peanut butter sandwiches, but you might get a few boxes of each of those flavors so that you can sell them to those customers. And if you run out beforehand, then you can let them know, hey, there's going to be another booth here at whenever the next booth is. You'll look up to see when the next booth is going to be at that space, specific place. Or if you don't think that there is going to be another booth there, ask their name and if they want to place the order and then you can deliver it. Your troop can deliver it to them later because you'll be able to get more cookies, but you have to sell what you've taken already. So don't set your, yourselves up to have a bunch of extra cookies of the less popular flavors. Offer samples. Sometimes people don't realize how delightful those shortbread cookies are, especially if they've got a cup of tea or a cup of cocoa. You know, there's just something lovely about shortbreads and um, cocoa. Mm -hmm. Bling your booth and use the costumes. Uh, be eye catching. Use a theme. We had a troop a couple years ago that was going to a dude ranch for their, their troop trip that summer. And so they made a Western booth. And it was awesome. It actually won them praise from GSUSA because it was such a big deal. Um, you have to order by the case for your initial order, but you do not have to order by the case for your planned order. Um, that is that is not true. Um, yeah. Um, ba, 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 ba. Use a square reader. Um, if you go on to the GSME volunteer swap um, 
Facebook group, you'll see that pe some people, some troops have already signed up for Square Readers. And if you do the link, then you not only earn some free swipes for you, but also some free swipes for them. Having access for credit cards, you know this from the, the uh, online sales that your girls did such a great job with during the initial orders. People like using their credit cards. I know I sure do. So they'll order more if they can use their credit cards. And give customers creative ideas of what they can do with cookies. Because remember, Easter's early. It's uh, April 1st. And so how fun to suggest in an Easter basket, you could have Girl Scout cookies. Or um, people who say they love Thin Mints. Awesome. Do you know? Well, I think all of the flavors freeze nicely, but Thin Mints are especially delightful in August when they've been in your freezer and you pull them out and surprise people with these super cold Thin Mints on a hot day. It's They're, they're like magic. Um, and you've got a million great ideas and your girls are going to have 10 million great ideas. So come up with some creative ideas of things that people could do with Girl Scout cookies beyond just going, getting in their car and eating a whole sleeve right now. You know, there are lots of great ideas. And have a plan B, have some backup plans, um, maybe a backup booth sale, like, okay, we've ordered these 300 boxes of cookies for this booth sale, and we only sold 200 of them, so we still have 100 boxes of cookies. That's okay, because we planned a second booth sale for just in case the following week, and instead of ordering more cookies, we'll just sell out what we've got. Um, maybe buddy up with another troop that also has some cookies that they want to sell, and then you split the proceeds based on the number of boxes that each troop brought to the booth. Make agreements with parents ahead of time that they're going to help their daughter with direct sales. Um, things like walking around the neighborhood with the with a wagon and the cookies that are available and even having a philanthropic plan of we want to donate X number of boxes of cookies to um, our local food kitchen or to our local senior center or to the rec department for after school stuff or whatever it is, whatever is meaningful to your troop. Um, and so that they could set aside those extra cookies for that. And more still, the wagon idea. This was really effective, the times that I got to do that with um, not only my daughters, but the other girls in our troop, of just walking around door to door with the cookies on hand and, and um, People, you know, see them and they're like, oh, look, you've only got five boxes of Thin Mints. I'll take all of them. Uh, so <laughs> where they might have only bought one before, but they see the five and they're ready to go. Um, take them along. If your kids are in sports or whatever, take them along and put a sign on your car that says, hey, I've still got Girl Scout cookies. And you'll be amazed at who will come to your car and buy those cookies from your troop. Do a clean out the cupboard the last weekend to remind customers that it'll be their last chance for a whole year. And you show up with what, what cookies you have. Um, and check out Pinterest for more ideas because Pinterest has lots of ideas. In fact, I think I have that page up. Um, all I did was put in the search Girl Scout cookie booth ideas and a whole bunch of ideas came up. This is not one that I really encourage you to use um, with the girls around uh, because we don't need to be talking about alcohol with the girls, but there are a whole bunch of other ideas on there. I don't know what this is about. That doesn't look like a book cookie booth. Look what they did here with a, a bookcase. Anyway, lots of ideas. I love Pinterest. It gets has lots of ideas. Just keep it girl friendly, please. And you've got some other terrific resources that I definitely want to share with you. So I, I mentioned this um, cookie, troop cookie guide. This is your friend. It's got lots of ideas and I believe it's page five whatever it says three this page right here talks about booth sales gives some great ideas and it talks about the door-to-door -door sales which is also what you're doing in the month of March so look those ideas over and talk about them with the girls talk about them with the parents so the whole troop is in on making this a success and then another terrific resource is our website besides this cookie finder app that's here if you go to cookies and nuts and click Girl Scout cookies you'll see you've got a whole bunch of um, ideas that you can share with people that you can send your friends to so they find out more information about it, um, including where the money goes, because some people will fuss, oh, your troop only gets 75 cents. It's like, well, let's look at where all of the money goes, because a dollar goes to the bakery to pay for the cookies, right? And 75 cents goes to your troop directly, but the rest of it stays in the state of Maine to make Girl Scouts happen here. So um, it's really 
it's really interesting to see where it all is and to let people know it's staying local, um, except for that part that goes to the bakery to pay for the actual cookies. All of the money is stays local and supports Girl Scouts with camp, with their membership, and with the programs that we offer for girls and adults. There is a Q&A. If people ask you some questions about cookies, you can send them to that or you can go there and find out some answers. You can get some history and you can get some support for cookie sellers, including the goal setting, decision making, money, money management, people skills and business ethics. And just yesterday, I have to show you this. If you go to your volunteer toolkit, just yesterday, they opened up the um, new resources tab. It's resources 2.0 and it's awesome so if you click on the resources tab you will see all sorts of resources for whatever level of girl scout you're working with um, and in there it had under the cookie program it has the cookie activity pin requirements so if your girls are interested in earning this year's cookie activity pin you can see the some activities that you might do and that the girls might do to earn that pin and let's, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Um, and then it gives some practical tips for parents, which might be handy to print out for your parents or to, um, to link as you communicate with them via the volunteer toolkit or your Facebook group or your email, however you communicate with your parents. Um, but this, this new resources tab is kind of awesome in general. And then for cookies, it does have some terrific resources for you. So take advantage of those resources. And did I have other things? No. I was thinking there was one more thing, but nope, I think that's it. Um, that's all I've got. But a resource that you also have is your service unit. Besides your service unit product sales supervisor and your covered supervisor, other leaders go to those service unit meetings and talk to other leaders to get ideas because you're all doing the same awesome thing and you are not in competition with each other. This is this wonderful, collaborative, multi-layered experience for all of us. And so share the joy and have fun with it um, and be sisters, collaborate together well. Um, because remember, progression is for everyone, including you. It's, it's the girls, it's the grownups, it's all of us. We're all learning, we're all growing, and we're all getting better at what we do. And so let's take advantage of the beautiful experience of the direct sales during cookies to become better at communication, to become better at goal setting, to become better at, um, at helping the girls build their five skills. Um, it's here for all of us. So wait, I keep clicking in the wrong place. Um, you've got this. You really have. Does anybody in the room have other questions? We've actually got quite a crowd in the room. How exciting. Um, Open up your mics if you have other questions. <laughs> and Jennifer posted in the chat, shortbread in warm maple syrup is awesome. It really is, isn't it? So good. Are there other questions? You're welcome to open your mic and just ask or to type it into the chat. And even though I am a little overzealous when it comes to the cookie sale program, I am open to the questions that are, are challenging and that um, maybe you feel if you feel frustrated or concerned about things, those are important questions to ask. Um, because if I don't know an answer, I will direct you to somebody who does and we will make sure that um, you feel powerful and you feel like you're able to work with what we've got. Give you one more 30 seconds or so to post a question or to open your mic and ask it. All right, then I am going to close out and post this on the GSME Volunteer Swap and on the YouTube channel so you can share it with folks if you like um, to collect ideas. Thank you so much for coming and thanks for doing what you do. And thanks for working with your girls to build those five skills and um, to just be awesome. Have a great day. Enjoy the super moon. <laughs>